so having introduced uh, the subject uh, cs8451 design and analysis of algorithms uh, its objective as well as uh, uh, the outcomes and the various uh, topics of the uh, subject in yesterday's session uh, now it is the time to discuss the first unit first unit if you could see the topic of first unit uh, it is a introduction unit it is an introduction unit if you could see that uh, it is an introduction unit and it starts with uh, what is an algorithm uh, how to uh, understand a problem and how to proceed with the problem in an algorithmic way and what are the different types of problems various types of problems are available and we are going to talk about the uh, analysis of algorithmic efficiency how the uh, algorithmic efficiency has been analyzed uh, and uh, its asymptotic notation that is mathematical notation we will keep, we will keep on seeing that asymptotic notation uh, and finally how that mathematical analysis have been arrived uh, both for recursive type of algorithms and non recursive type of algorithms so this unit is treated as most and most vital unit as far as the subject is concerned because this is the most fundamental unit. if you could see that uh, many things are the topic fundamentals of algorithm problem solving fundamentals of algorithm analysis of algorithmic efficiency uh, mathematical analysis empirical analysis analysis framework so everything is analysis so here you are not going to design any algorithm here you are going to focus on whenever an algorithm is designed so what are the thing you need to do whenever you are going to design algorithm what are the things you are going to do whenever algorithm is given to you what are the things or what are the techniques or what are the strategies you have to follow for analyzing such kind of algorithms that's what the topic of the first unit i hope you understand what are the things that we are going to cover in the first unit as far as the syllabus is concerned so notation of notion of algorithm fundamentals of algorithmic problem solving important problem types fundamentals of algorithms of algorithmic efficiency asymptotic notation and their properties analysis framework empirical analysis mathematical analysis for recursive and non recursive algorithms visualization so for all the topics i uh, invite you to see the uh, levitin and in the levitin book the levitin book is available in the google classroom last semester itself i uploaded in the google classroom you check through the other pages and you can uh, use those uh, material if not available or if you are not able to take it from the google classroom i will once again upload it right and the uh, today uh, topic what i am plan to cover to you is uh, notion of an algorithm fundamentals of algorithmic problem solving important problem types so these are the topic i am going to uh, cover by today uh, let me go into the topic so it is a fourth semester uh, b computer science uh, engineering subject the title is design and analysis of algorithms uh, the subject code is cs8451 it is under regulation 2017 in anna university chennai so the if the the unit that we are going to cover is the first unit which is uh, having the title introduction which it deals with uh, algorithms and its associated analysis the fundamentals so what is the notion of an algorithm if you could refer the book uh, levitin so this definition you could find it so whenever you read a definition you should remember the uh, keywords see uh, you always uh, be in a position to give the algorithmic step uh, algorithm definition what is that step by step instruction to solve a problem so this is a, like a, some uh, friendly way of defining an algorithm but if you could see uh, the real definition what is that it is a sequence of an ambiguous instruction sequence by remember the word an ambiguous that is the instruction that you are going to write as a part as as an algorithm should be clear from any confusion that is called unambiguous it should be clear you should not give any confusion what it is what you are writing in and what it be what it should be how that be understood that kind of confusions won't be available or should not be available there so it should be completely unambiguous unambiguous so you should remember that keyword unambiguous instruction for solving a problem what is me what do you mean by that that is if you want to obtain an output if you want to obtain an output look at the word for any legitimate input so look at the word in legitimate legitimate is so you can see say for example i am writing a program for ascending order so for that i need only numbers suppose if you want alphabets to be arranged in ascending order if you give alphabets then that is not a legitimate input to the program because my program and my algorithm is confined to numbers not an alphabet 
so but if you think so alphabets can also be arranged in ascending order and if you are giving alphabets and that a program does not accept all moments then that kind of input is not a legitimate input of course if you are a good programmer you should write a program both to adapt numbers as well as characters but i already had told that that program is only for numbers that's the idea and what is what is the thing that is remaining uh, in order to understand the meaning of this subject that output you are expecting it from a legitimate input and the in conversion of the input or the production of the output from the input should take a finite amount of, amount of time that plays the vital role should take a finite amount of time so it should take a, a, a very big amount of time or small amount of time or moderate amount of time whatever it may be it should be countable it should be a finite amount of time so if you look at the picture so here uh, you are giving a problem the problem is solved using an algorithm the algorithm is fed into a computer and this algorithm expects a legitimate input and produces the uh, required output in a uh, finite amount of time this is the notion of an algorithm what are the key points about an algorithm what are the key see first of all and let me read one by one because it is completely a theoretical subject and you should keep remember all the key points and especially the important buzzword See, first this is the first sentence that is saying about the algorithm key, key points. The non-ambiguity requirement. What is that? The non-ambiguity requirement for each step of an algorithm. So what is that? The non-ambiguity requirement. What is it? So it should be free from any ambiguous instruction. It should not be compromised. It should not be compromised. It cannot be compromised. So first of all, you should keep remember that the requirement for each is the algorithm cannot be compromised. So each algorithmic statement or each instruction should be free from ambiguity. Then whenever you try to give input uh, to the computer, which accepts an algorithm and that takes the input, the input should have a predefined range. And that input should be specified carefully. You need not give any kind of input. So that's just what I, now I explained. I have written a program for arranging the ascending order of numbers, but someone is giving input uh, for alphabets. How can I do that? And I, I suppose I can do an uh, ascending order for the number within 1 to 100. Suppose someone is giving a number uh, between 1000 to 2000. How can I do that? So that thing you should keep in remember. Keep in remember. So before writing an algorithm, you should always have a pledge like statement. So I, the instruction that I am going to write should be a non-ambiguity statement and the input that is, I am going to accept for this algorithm should be clearly pre uh, pre specified because you are an algorithm developer and from your algorithm only you are going to write a program. So you should clearly specify to the user or the tester or the customer, those who are going to use your program. So this is this this is the program for uh, having uh, performed or having developed for this purpose and this program should accept only this kind of input and this input should have this uh, predefined range like that you should specify clearly as well as carefully. And the other thing is you are writing an algorithm and someone is also writing an algorithm and you are writing an algorithm you want to represent the algorithm in different ways it can be. It can be that is if you are writing an algorithm and that algorithm should strictly follow one kind of uh, way means that it is not fair it should be represented in different or enormous number of ways then only it should be treated as a fair one and another thing for a same problem you can find enormous number of algorithms you cannot uh, confide to one algorithm no 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 this problem is solved only by this algorithm no other option is there we should go only for that this is not the situation that should not be the situation for a program solve for a problem solver the problem solver should provide them plenty of opportunities of choosing different varieties of algorithm in order to produce a solution and uh, if you could see the last line algorithms for the same problem you have a same problem and you have different algorithms but it is based on different ideas it, but you should keep in mind that the algorithm should solve the problem dramatically at different speeds one algorithm can solve at uh, one minute, another algorithm can solve at uh, 30 seconds, another algorithm can solve one minute, 30 seconds, another problem will solve two minutes, like that. So, with respect to the time, you can differentiate the algorithm or you can either go for accepting or uh, denying that algorithm. But the idea may be different. So, based on the idea, the time consumption also differs. 
So let me take a, a small example how for a simple problem you have different kind of algorithms. Let me take an example of computing the greatest common divisor. So what is the greatest common divisor? Look at the definition very carefully. The greatest common divisor of two non-negative and not both zero. See, look at it. Non-negative. So it should not be a negative number. And not both zero. You have you have you have, you have to provide with the two numbers and the two numbers should not be zero. Any other, any one number can be a zero. So if two numbers, say for example, m and n is given to you for computing the uh, greatest common divisor, and you should keep in mind that no m as well as no n should be a should be a negative number. It should be a non-negative number. And you should ensure that either m or n should be uh, should, uh, should be zero. Either, any, any one should be zero, not both. And that what is greatest common divisor? It is the number. It is also a number and it is a largest number and it is an integer number and it should divide both m and n evenly with the remainder of zero. So it should be a large number, it should be an integer number, and it should divide the input number given m and n evenly with the remainder of zero. Evenly means with the remainder of zero. What are the algorithms available in the market for solving such a problem or for computing the greatest common divisor of two integers? Oilets algorithm, consecutive integer checking algorithm, middle school procedure, incorporation of C of eratosthesis into the middle school procedure. That middle school procedure is one kind of approach. Into that, some additional uh, improvement has been added. So if you could see the book, you can find uh, another additional information. In the slide, it is the key point that is to be delivered, right? So, what is the thing that is need to remember is for the same problem, you have many algorithms. So, what is the criteria that you should choose for selecting any one algorithm? You have plenty of ideas, right? What are the plenty of ideas? Uh, the requirement, uh, the statement should be non ambiguity. Uh, the each step should not be compromised. The range should be specifically so you based on these kind of characteristics you have to choose an algorithm above all you should choose an algorithm based on the definition that is it should execute the problem in order to provide the solution with the finite amount of time so that you should remember uh, fundamental of algorithmic problem solving very 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 important question as far as the first unit concern and it is very uh, easier in terms of uh, understanding the each topic so whenever you want to solve a problem, uh, first of all, what do you need to do? You need to understand the problem, right? So the first step is understanding the problem. Once you understand the problem, then you should think about what kind of software or hard, what kind of software and hardware requirements, especially hardware requirements is needed uh, to solve the problem. That is for ascertaining the capabilities of computational device. Then uh, choosing between exact and approximate problems. So, say what kind of solution we are going to provide for that particular problem. Whether you have to provide an exact solution or you need to provide an approximate solution. So that you need to decide. After having uh, done the preliminary uh, process, finally you should uh, go for uh, algorithm uh, design techniques. So uh, we will see what are the various algorithm design techniques available. Then you need to design, then you go for designing an algorithm by choosing a proper data structure. So this is what we have studied, you have studied in the previous semester, only the data structure. So where the data structure comes, here only data structure comes. Here only data structure comes. So when you are saying that you are a pro computer programmer, you should be thorough and strong enough in algorithmic problem solving. If you are thorough and strong in algorithmic problem solving with the more number of creative thinking and logical reasoning, then uh, it is easier for you to code the algorithm in any programming language as well as uh, if you know the basic things as well as the different varieties of data structure you are in a position to choose a space data structure specifically for your problem so then methods of specifying an algorithm proving an algorithm's correctness analyzing an algorithm so everything is everything you have to specify everything you have to decide what are the methods how to prove the algorithm correctness and how to analyze it. after having done everything the final step is coding and algorithm so this is what the way in which you have to approach any problem using an uh, algorithmic approach and the uh, fundamentals right let me see one by one uh, you need it what is understanding problem so before that the slow cycle of algorithm design and analysis process so you have to understand the problem 
as in the top it is saying that you have to understand the problem you have to understand the problem and then you need to design uh, computational means that is the uh, hardware requirements as well as software requirement and then what kind of input you are going to provide ada exact so approximate solving technique then you have to design an algorithm having designed an algorithm uh, you have to prove it. So if you could see that flow diagram see here the arrow comes like that right after designing an algorithm if you want to go for proving correctness you can go you can straight away come to analyze the algorithm finally coding analysis. so this is the uh, design and analysis process of any algorithm let me come to the point one by one. Understanding the problem. How to understand the problem? First of all, you should read the problem description carefully. Whenever your problem statement is given, you should read. So we have a weakness. We have a weakness with this. What is the weakness with this? Whenever you try to answer your question in the university question paper, if any question is asked like that, uh, explain, uh, describe, we are very we feel we, 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 we feel very comfortable in answering such question. Suppose uh, the question might be like that. What is that? It gives a narrative passage. Assume that. Let us consider that. Like that, it starts with some passage like statement with the four to five lines. After understanding the passage, below the passage, there will be some question asked. If that is the situation, then definitely you won't even read the question in the university examination paper. Similarly, uh, for any situation, our psychological uh, factor is uh, doing like that. So what you have to do is you have to read the problem description carefully and ask a question if you have any doubts. Who is the problem provider? To, to the problem you have to ask question because uh, the problem provider or the problem uh, source uh, cannot have much idea about the problem. They simply thinking this is the problem and I need this answer like that. So they are simply expecting answer. But they don't know completely about them. So it is your responsibility to keep on asking the questions. What has happened? What is there? How long? How, like that, like that. You keep on taking the question only, then you can build it, the uh, wonderful uh, data for the uh, algorithm to get solved, for the algorithm to solve it. So next step, after understanding the uh, problem, then you need to do a small hand calculation. To hand calculation. If you do a hand calculation only, you can know in depth about a particular subject. Whether it is really worth of it as far as the uh, thing is concerned, or you need to go for some other things. So you need to do your hand calculation. Next, uh, you need to think about the input. An input to an algorithm, especially the instance, yes, of course. You, 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 the word input is to an algorithm, or the word input is to a program. Likewise, the word instance is to a problem. So instance is a small miniature of the problem. So you need to do uh, uh, choose a small miniature of the problem and uh, submit it to the uh, process. So based on the input uh, given, it is very important to specify exactly the set of instances the algorithm needs to handle. So then it is uh, properly uh, understood and that uh, can be uh, specified exactly in order to handle that algorithm. In case if you fail to do that, what is that? If you are not properly understanding the problem, without proper understanding the problem, you go for implementing the same and you go for executing the same. That too, the problem is executed in the so if you fail to do this, your algorithm may work correctly for a message. You may say that, but majority of algorithm input it is used. But there are certain input for which your algorithm works poor as well as sometimes it will get crash also because of some range constraint or because that is not a legitimate input like that, like that stuff. You may feel you may fail. So you need to understand where we have failed in the previous cases, and now you should have a a mission that you should not fail in this particular uh, problem uh, solving technique. So likewise, you should keep on tracking that. So that is what uh, you need to do when you are understanding the problem. After understanding the problem, it is your responsibility to decide what is the computer hardware as well as the software that is required for solving the problem. As of now, uh, the computational capability is, uh, is uh, based on the RAM, uh, ROM, or any other uh, uh, CP processor speed, uh, the, like there are stuff that are uh, that are available with respect. So the vast majority of algorithm in use today are still destined. See, original machine is one one machine. Then what we need a uh, random access memory. What is the purpose of random access memory? What is why for you have to use this? So accordingly, you need to study the uh, process. So the central assumption of any RAM model does not hold for some newer computers that can execute operation. Say that is what the thing. 
So what do you need to do is you need to go for some parallel algorithms. Parallel algorithms. So if you go for parallel algorithm, then the weakness or the restriction of the RAM model can be completely eradicated. Other thing, there are important problems. However, they are very complex by their nature, or have to process huge volumes of data, or deal with application where the time is critical. So that is the idea. So many problems are still available, but it needs a huge volumes of data, and it deals with application where the time is. So it's a time critical function. So it is imperative to aware of the speed and memory available. So whenever you go for choosing such an application, you should think about whether my uh, computational device is capable enough to connect it. Because industry standard is different, and also we uh, we uh, developed in a different way of uh, providing the uh, speed and memory with respect to the algorithm algorithm development. So whenever you start understanding the problem and whatever the information you need, you have to keep the back department or uh, other thing in order to get the problem uh, input. And then you need to do the uh, device capability. Now, choosing between uh, approximation, so it is a very important two-mark two question. What is uh, exact algorithm? What is approximation algorithm? Right. So, what is the exact algorithm? The exact algorithm is what does the thing is by the word itself. Exact means you need to give all the necessary input to the problem. So that is what a uh, uh, exact algorithm. So uh, that is output. All the necessary input uh, and the output are received from those kind of algorithm should be also be accurate as well as exact. Exact. The other word for exact is accurate. Whereas for uh, uh, approximate, the name itself I mean. It may be some uh, partial values, not partial value, it may be nearing to the uh, universal values, but that is not sure. So that is the idea in the first one. So that is the situation uh, whenever you want to choose between exact and approximate problem solving. Uh, first, uh, what you need to do is there are, uh, if you go to read the second line, first, there are important problems that simply can be solved, yes, of course. Uh, for most of their instances, the example, including uh, square roots, uh, cycling. Uh, non linear equation, I already definitely. So, these are the things that need record. So, it's study sky road. Look at the example solving non linear equation and a eval evaluating definite detectors. So, that you think you should remember. Second, the available algorithm for solving a problem exactly can be unacceptably slow because of the problem. So, whenever you want to go for exact problem solving, so because of some intrinsic, some uh, confusions or some complexities there, so you need to go for uh, many problems in order to get a very large number of choices. You will see such uh, difficult problems uh, for solving the uh, for the solution using the uh, algorithmic strategy. So, what is the third point? Is an approximation algorithm can be part of more sophisticated algorithm. So, approximation algorithm is uh, one kind of algorithm that is uh, treated as a most sophisticated algorithm and it tries to solve the problem exactly. That is one other idea. So in this slide, what are the content you need to remember is definition for external algorithm, definition for uh, approximation algorithm, and uh, what is that? Uh, some kind of statement which is uh, dealing with the intrinsic and extrinsic uh, idea. And finally, what you need to do is uh, choosing between the alternatives. So decent exit, what are the various decent exits? There are plenty of decent exits. In your syllabus, you have only five units. After the five units, the mid three units, second unit, third unit, what they only discuss with the uh, various uh, problems of the decent things. Of, of course, if you find in the uh, place, you can find the last of uh, uh, decent techniques. Brute force, excessive search, degrees and conquer, dividend conquer, transform and conquer, hashing. Either you can find a lot of uh, thing, a lot of thing, right? A lot of. Uh, so how to design an algorithm? After designing an algorithm, so what is that uh, or not designing an algorithm? While you are going for designing an algorithm, what input you need? Uh, that is uh, to be treated as a trivial one. And if you design an algorithm, then you should think about that. That algorithm should be also associated with a data section. So based on that, only you will divide uh, the idea and other things. So some design techniques can simply end up to the problem in question. Sometimes several techniques need to be combined and there are algorithms that are hard to pinpoint as application. So what is the, what is in general they are uh, talking about is, uh, once you understood the problem, then your question is to design an algorithm. 
uh, while designing an algorithm uh, after a successful completion of the algorithm, then it is a requirement to think about uh, other need, other need. In case if that is not uh, fulfilled, then you need to choose for another algorithm in design techniques, and you have to proceed in the same way. So ultimately, you should devise an algorithm as well as uh, you should choose a particular data structure that works uh, the algorithm. So you, so we, we, uh, there are some books that is this algorithm plus the data structure is equal to perhaps, right? So we could see the word algorithms plus data structure is equal to. So data structure you are studying the algorithm. So by simultaneously you are studying the programming language also. You don't know programming like that. You are studying the algorithm. Also. So that is the way. Uh, way uh, that is the point that why you get the distinction between the. Uh, uh, one and within the other with respect to the algorithmic problem solving. So methods of uh, specifying an algorithm. So in what way you have to use it? In a natural language. It is obvious. So the natural language statement. Or else you can go for a flowchart or uh, and the flowchart is what is that? It is a symbolic representation of an algorithm. So that is the idea. And when you are going to do that, uh, when you are going to do that, what you are going to do that, then you should uh, think about the idea given uh, in this or discussed in this uh, particular class. Mm -hmm. So the state of the art of computing has not yet reached a point where an algorithm is crucial. One more point I forgot to tell you. Pseudocode. Pseudocode is also another important thing, uh, which uh, that is effective in using the uh, specific the methods, methods, right? So with this, I think uh, I will close an algorithm. Uh, up, up to this, we can uh, What is that? Uh, proving an algorithm's uh, correctness. Uh, you go for a mathematical induction or algorithmic uh, iteration or algorithmic uh, um, regression. So regression or non-regression algorithm with respect to method. So which is, that's, that can be used for proving the algorithmic's correctness. Then you should uh, analyze the algorithm. One is the time evasion is this is algorithm if we analysis can be done with the help of two uh, uh, efficient parameter of this time and phase. So some may feel that my algorithm is good and it is working convenient. Some may feel that uh, compared to your algorithm, compared to your vehicle, mine is good and it is doing this business. So whenever you need an algorithm, whenever you need a requirement, accordingly the things are things are doing it. So what is that? Another desirable capacity is simplicity. So you should, should prefer to look at that is very simpler. So who one or whoever the no wise people, if you take the code, then he can be able to understand the code. So that means that such way simplicity it should be. So you do not uh, you, one um, stage you are using uh, right straight away normally equal symbol. In another case you are using it there some other thing. So you should think about that aspect also before proceeding further. So in general, if you are not satisfied, in case you are not satisfied with the algorithm efficiency, uh, maybe it's simplicity or uh, generality, you must uh, return to the drawing for a redesign. So you should say that uh, automatically you go for any before getting into the uh, fragment and then get back into the series. But what you can do is you can uh, uh, hold it in your hand and then you start writing. Right? So this is what the thing that you need to analyze while preparing an algorithm. What do you know? Just writing uh, programs based on the computer, and it needs a software uh, platform, and it can be of any platform once you are designed an algorithm. That is the most important. So, important problem types: sorting, searching, string processing, graph problems, amino, uh, geometric problems, numerical problems. So, these are the different categories of problems by which uh, you uh, which the students are to be. Uh, study that has to be aware of it. So this will take me level of that or not. Fundamentals of uh, analysis of algorithm is that this topic we will see uh, tomorrow. So this is the thing that is we are going to discuss today topic. So let me uh, stop the screen for a while. Let's just stop the recording. <laughs>